Hello everyone, my name is Evan Freiberger and today we're going to be talking about this tropical wave that is coming off of Africa that we might have to keep an eye on. Now the good news is, is that this is nowhere near the United States right now, but some ensemble members are trying to bring this thing a little bit closer than we would technically like to see this far out, but we are probably around 10 to 14 days from this thing even forming into the first place. But I did just want to come on here because it does seem like this storm could actually form into like a tropical storm or a hurricane. So in this video, we're going to be breaking that down and also our long-term models are still indicating that we could continue to see a cool down across much of the United States it could last for a little bit longer than we previously thought before we get started though make sure you hit that like and subscribe button it does help out the channel a lot we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers not sure if we're going to get there anytime soon but if you hit that subscribe button that's another plus one towards our goal so if you come over and look at our tropical wave right now you can see it's kind of sitting right over here near Gambia just off of the western coast of of Africa. This is expected to pass a little bit south of Cape Verde, but again, there is still some possibility it could go a little bit further north than that. And in the short term, this wave is probably going to struggle, but down the line, conditions could get kind of favorable for this thing to develop a little bit more and a little bit more until maybe eventually we get a tropical storm or a hurricane. If we come over here and look at our current formation chances over the next two days, it is still currently sitting at around 0%, but over the next seven days, we could be seeing a 30% chance of this thing developing. If we look over to where our storm is right now and then look at our surface ocean temperatures you can see that we do have enough to even support tropical development if the surrounding environment is there as early as today or tomorrow but as of right now the environment doesn't really seem like it's going to be there and we're going to be talking about that in just a moment but overall in its projected path we are going to have 27 degrees celsius and above water temperatures that will support this thing being able to at least be able to turn into a tropical storm over the next five days and as you can see as this thing moves off to the west we still have this 29 30 degree temperatures over here just north of Puerto Rico and even in the Caribbean if this thing does try to make a pass at the Caribbean still a little bit uncertain but we do have some ensemble members to look at so let's go ahead and do that so if we come over here to the EPS this is one of our ensemble members which is basically just an average of everything you get about 50 model runs all at once and then just kind of smushes it all together and as you can see we do have a high pressure system currently out over here in the kind of western and or I would say the eastern Atlantic and a low pressure over there here in the UK and then back over here in the United States, we have an exiting low pressure system. And as I push this forward, you can see that this high pressure system is going to continue to hang around. And then we're eventually going to get an even stronger push over here in the United States with another low pressure system. That's going to be bringing those temperatures and those humidities back down for a lot of the United States. But generally, overall, you can see that that high pressure system over the next couple of days kind of sticks around in the same spot, which means that any tropical system that forms off of Africa is going to kind of move generally west, northwest westward as long as this high pressure system stays legit and then as you can see back over here in the united states you can see that next round of cooler air really starting to pour down into the eastern united states and the good news about this low pressure system is that pretty much if you go outside and it's still kind of on the cooler side and we still get a lot of dry air around that's basically forming as a barrier that will protect the eastern united states and potentially even the southern united states from really much of any tropical activity so we really got to watch this low pressure system and how it develops and this high pressure system to see how their intensities kind of progress as we go into the future as it's going to be very important to see where this high pressure system ends up being in this low pressure system ends up being as our tropical system decides to form now if we look at our moisture content out there right now you can see we have a decent amount of dry air back over here just north of where our tropical system will be trying to develop that is going to be impacting our tropical system in the short term and potentially even in the long term you see some of that drier air makes its and sneaks its way out in front of this storm as it continues off to the west but you can see as I push this forward just a little bit on the EPS model that it does start to release it does start to moisten up a little bit as our tropical system continues off to the west so eventually we could see that dry air dissipate and as long as there's enough moisture which it looks like there is going to be we could see this storm eventually try to develop another thing that we got to watch out for is where our wind shear environment is and as you can see generally right now there's a decent amount of flow where our storm is currently so that's going to keep it on the downside for a little bit but as we continue to push this forward you can see a lot of that shear starts to release we are still generally going to have some shear on the northern side of the storm which could push convection around and kind of pamper the storm from being able to form a low level circulation but as that 
dry air starts to release and the storm starts to move into some better water temperatures as it moves further off to the west. That's why I'm deciding to make a video about this just because there could be some chances, not really in the short term, but in the long term of this thing really developing into something that we might eventually have to keep an eye on, especially depending on where that high pressure system ends up. Now, if we come over to our ensembles and kind of look at where this thing could be in the future, this is about going out to about six days here from now, but you know, really starting off from now going out into six days. And so as you can see, over the next six days, we are expecting this storm to eventually try to develop into something initially, but you can see a lot of our members are quite weak because it's battling that drier air and a little bit of extra shear at this point. But then as we start to get further out in the future, at around six days, you can see a lot more of our members try to develop this into like a weak tropical storm as we move into around Saturday, September 6th. See our high pressure system shows a lot of agreement up there. Low pressure system position though is a little bit iffy. You can see ensembles up there are a little bit more spread out. You see all these blue numbers, they're pretty tightly together and these red numbers indicating that low pressure system are a little bit further apart there. So, you know, not as much certainty with these low pressure systems positions as they move into the United States, but a lot more certainty, at least in terms of the high pressure position. Now, if you want to look at a little bit further out into the future and kind of compare and contrast our models, we can also look at the GEFS ensemble. You can see that it is also showing a decent chance of development. So we do have some agreement across the board here on this storm trying to develop into a tropical storm over the next six days and as i continue to push this out you can see that the gefs model does bring this further off to the north and west but then eventually it curves it off to the north pretty substantially and that's because we have this high pressure system back over here as i push this forward by around wednesday which is about 10 days out by the way so you know we're in la la land with this model but it does kind of give us an overall depiction of how much certainty we have on our in environment that far out and that high pressure system could be there and we could see a weakness and if that does happen this will definitely form off to the north and not really affect the United States at all. Now the interesting thing about the past EPS model run is that look at this this is the last kind of long term Euro model run and you can see it brings a lot more of these members further down to the south. This is why I've decided to make a video about this just in general because the possibility is there. Now again we're 10 days out so it's a pretty large spread. This thing could early curve out to the ocean and not be any problem whatsoever it could also take a close approach down here to the caribbean so as long as that chance and it's in and it's a decent chance here at least in the euro of about 30 percent that we could see this thing further down to the south there so i do think it's worth keeping an eye on if you continue to push this forward you could see a close approach to the caribbean still might have more of an errand path as you know we get another weakness in that high pressure but again a lot of uncertainty at this point it will be interesting to see what this storm ends up doing whenever we get a storm that starts in this low of a latitude always going to keep an eye on it thankfully our overall pattern still kind of seems supportive of a recurve but again that can change as we go out into the future so that's why on my thumbnail i try to show you guys that there's more of a chance of a recurve there and i really try not to bring it close to the united states there does seem to be a decent chance that this might try to go into the caribbean so i'm gonna be keeping my eye on this i know it's been a long time since you guys have seen me but i'm still here i'm still watching it it's just been quiet you know i typically only cover like the bigger events or like when there's a decent chance for tornadoes some things that we can you know actually predict but there just hasn't been any tropical activity that's been threatening the united states and really not much severe weather really at all in terms of tornado chances. Now, I know one thing that a lot of people have been enjoying out there, especially myself, is this cool down that we've been having. As you can see, over the next six to 10 days, we are expecting that to continue as we get another burst here of some cooler air down into the country. And that's also going to bring that dry air back down again. So another round of some cooler weather. So I know a lot of people in the southeast, we call this false fall, but this is almost kind of starting to feel like a real fall kind of beginning. But as you can see, as we go into the 18, 14 day range, things warm up a little bit, but still staying near average. And three to four weeks out from now, still not a whole lot of indication that our cooler temperatures are really, or our, you know, average to below average is really going to go away. And in order to see generally why that is happening, you can see that we've had this exiting low pressure system out over here. That's been generally just continuing to dump Canadian and Arctic air into the United States. And obviously that's not going to be below freezing yet because we're not quite into winter. But as of right now, that means, you know, widespread 50 to the 70s across the United States. As I continue to push this forward, you can see that that kind of sticks around that general north to southeast flow here in the gray 
Rays is sticking around. And you can see we have actually another low pressure system back up here approaching the United States. And look at this thing make a very deep dig down into the United States. Now, if there wasn't a bunch of dry air in this area, as you can see, if I come over here to the dew point, not a whole lot, but look at this. Maybe a small chance here for some severe weather in the long term. Back over here, 60 degree dew points, quite a lot of flow aloft, but the, the, it's a little bit of a positively tilted drop. Not a whole lot there. There is some dew points, and we also have some lower level shear down here as well. So let's go look at our instability and see if there's any chances for something to develop out here. And yeah, look at this. GFS is indicating a signal at around six days out from now where we could have some severe weather, maybe over there in the Ohio Valley, maybe even a tornado chance as well, depending on how our other kinematics develop as we get closer. There might be too much of a capping inversion. Things just could be all off as we get closer and closer as our short-term models get into range. But that is a decent look, at least for some potential for at least some damaging winds, maybe a couple of tornadoes. Might have to be something we keep an eye on. But the good news is, is that as this larger system pushes down to the south and east, what we are hoping at least is that, one, we're going to get another push of some cooler weather, but also it's going to bring that cooler and drier air on the backside, and that will eventually eject out over in the Atlantic as this system back over here tries to approach. But just another thing to kind of tug our tropical system further off away from the United States, hopefully. Again, these things can change. We're around five to eight days out on this model, but overall, over the next couple of days, this is starting from today, going into a couple days from now, you can see that cooler air is going to stick around, but it's going to get another big push of cool air as we move into about the fourth and the fifth, especially up here in the northwest, going into the Ohio Valley, also the Great Lakes as well, seeping into the northeast as we go a little bit further into the future at around the sixth. And then by the sec sixth, going into the seventh, I mean, we're going to have a pretty large area here of some cooler air. So definitely keeping an eye on that. Going to be nice temperatures out there for a lot of folks. So fall isn't over yet. You know, we still have the chances, especially down here in the southeast, that humidity really returns. We start to get some heat. It's going to feel like summer again. So it still could be false fall right now. But hopes are strong for at least the next couple of seven to ten days, maybe even further out than that. We could see these colder temperatures stick until maybe as we get into mid-September, we might start to see some warm-ups again and summer return at least for the southeast going into the great plain but everyone that's going to be it for me thank you again so much for watching and yeah i'll be watching this tropical system over here also be watching for that severe weather potential in the united states it's still a little bit too far out to say anything for certain as we get into august you know how much cape and instability you're going to get is going to be up in the air but i will be making another video a day after tomorrow and we'll see if that signal is still there and if it is we'll do a little bit more of a deeper breakdown of what is possible with that system thank you guys so much for tuning in and i'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.